Hi, this is Jim Babjack from the Smithereens, and you're listening to Jim and Mike Talk. with us today. He's a songwriter, guitarist, vocalist, and according to Wikipedia, he's also a banker. He's, <laughs> he's one of the founding members of the rock and ro- great rock and roll band, The Smithereens. Let's welcome Jim Babjack to Jim and Mike Tuck. Hello. Have you seen yeah. your Wikipedia page? Uh, I can't see. Yeah, you know, I, I've been trying to get that banker thing t- taken off. <laughs> But uh, uh-huh. somebody keeps changing it, uh, those people that spy on it and stuff. Because apparently yeah. it, was, it was in an article somewhere. So, so that well, would anyone, be you or somebody else? Well, anyone well, you in an edit. Well, no, that is – yeah, no, I've, I've had people try to edit it out, and they keep putting it back in. Uh-huh. I just don't want it up there because it doesn't yeah. define me at all. It's, it, I, oh, do yes. have a, I do have a day job. Uh, I mean, that's why yeah. I have health insurance. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but it's it's just a job, you know, and um, mm-hmm. I've been doing that from home since March and hopefully I can continue doing that because it's much better life balance for me. And, and you know, for that yeah. reason, I'm not commuting. I have more time to write songs and play guitar and do normal stuff that I should mm-hmm. be doing. <laughs> yeah. Our listeners uh, back there behind Jimmy, uh, I'm guessing you're at home in your basement or you're out at a fine restaurant and bar. No, this is upstairs. Uh, it's not oh, in the basement. It's, upstairs. <laughs> I, it's, it's next to. It's actually next to my library. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this in the library, but then people would think I'm really mm-hmm. smart with all these books behind yeah. me. Right yeah, here. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing about uh, 50 different ornate uh, alcohol bottles. Very, very uh, more. Oh, yeah, it's very, very well. Easy. He's panning back and forth. Very oh, beautiful. And there's uh, <laughs> there's a whole bunch yeah. down there. Wow. No, I. I uh, <laughs> I could actually, I, I used to joke when we were on tour, I'd go into a hotel bar and, and say to our drummer, Dennis, I said, well, I have a better selection in my house than this, this mm-hmm. place does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are thinking you're joking then, and you're not. It's pretty funny. No. <laughs> I, my, I have a bad reputation. I, I you know, I, I like yeah. alcohol. I don't drink all mm-hmm. the time, obviously. I, yeah. you know, I, I eat raw spinach every day and celery mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when it comes to alcohol, uh, well, my dad owned a bar when I was younger, when I was, um, okay. yeah. and uh, so I, you know, I started with the best. I always went for yeah. the top shelf. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. always about quality, <laughs> quality. Right, right. You like, quality, not you like, quantity. You like bourbon at all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I started getting into it about, and I lost track of it. My brother and I were talking about it. I think it's been 15 years. I used to be a scotch drinker, and then, well, I still am occasionally. Mm-hmm. And um, no, I, I got turned on to bourbon, I, I'm guessing now, 15 years. I don't know okay. why all of a sudden, I, I would say, uh, oh, last month, but it was actually three years ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know yeah. what happened to time. Yeah. Time just, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, I'm 63 years old. I mean, what, mm-hmm. what the hell? I am. <laughs> this year, but went, anyway, uh, yeah, you know, when, when I make, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I like to cook too. So, if I'll make oh, chicken cool. fajitas or something, or Mexican, mm-hmm. I'll have tequila mm-hmm. shots mm-hmm. before, uh, not shots, but I'll have one or two before dinner. Yeah, yeah. but mm-hmm. and then red wine with Italian meal. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, matching it. I only, I only drink bourbon on Sunday nights. Only yeah. Sunday nights. Yeah, yeah we we watch. A lot of TV Sunday nights. That's our TV night, and uh, yeah, like Walking Dead. And so I just started. I, I'll ha- only have well that that makes it so that I don't have bourbon every night, you know. So I have a 
<laughs> this Sunday. Well, that's the what matches why... with The Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't drink during Walking Dead uh, or Bloody Mary. Walking Dead. Yeah. I uh, and that's one of the reasons I've lost weight because we haven't been playing since March. And um, so what happens when we play is there always seems to be a bottle of something around. Mm -hmm. And when you're on stage and performing and you're up there for two hours or whatever, your adrenaline's really going. And all of a sudden, you don't realize how much you drank. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and, and beer. Beer puts the weight on. Yeah. Well, that's why I started drinking Guinness years ago, because it's less calories than beer. And, and I like it better. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that and the pizza after the shows. Uh -huh. if, yeah. if you put <laughs> late, pizza, late, night, late night pizza, late night pizza, nothing like it. I, I know, except that's what's been preventing me from losing weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. since we haven't been playing since, well, since March, I haven't been doing that. And uh, mm -hmm. I lost 25 pounds just by mm -hmm. doing nothing. Uh, Plus being on the road, it's, I mean, there are places that have healthy foods, but it's. Yeah, but. But, late at, but after the show late at night, it's hard to find, you know, you're going to eat pizza and you're going to eat. Yeah. maybe a burger you know. i'm starving yeah. after a show yeah. i mean I, yeah. I don't know if you have any idea what you know you're up there and and yeah. mm -hmm. uh i don't know what it is but it, it could be we could be done with a show at midnight or whatever and um i'm starving i mean yeah, we yeah. all are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're the one that jumps off the stage and goes uh, goes down with your electric guitar in the among the fans. So uh, a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I uh, don't know if I can keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so this. Um, so let's talk about the new album first. By the way, this oh. is coffee, really. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm having so cold too. water. Cold water. So new new album. New album. Um, the bar. Well, Oh, that. Yes, yeah. that one. <laughs> um, so, the, so the bar is, it's you, Danny uh, Adlerman, Kurt yes. Ryle, yes. and uh, from the Grip Weeds. And yeah. the bar is your last name, the beginning letter of your last name. Right. That was my clever idea at the time. Yeah, it uh, works. Now, it was works. this... Um, so how did, how, did, how, did, it, how did this project, yeah. how did the project come together? Well, Danny Adlerman just... was, he's, he's a children's book author, him and his wife, Kim, and um, I helped him um, do some recording for his children's record mm -hmm. uh, CD. Cool. So I introduced him to Kurt, and then we started, you know, doing that, and then uh, he started writing other songs that weren't children-type lyrics, so mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's how that happened. We st slowly started recording these songs, and some of these songs go back, I I'm guessing now maybe 20 at least 15 years but oh, wow. uh, it's just been sitting in the can i mean mm -hmm. the same with my solo stuff uh i've got stuff that's over 25 years old that i haven't released it's it's already mm -hmm. done i just have yeah. to master it and put it out but because of my day job and touring with the band and people dying and this and that mm -hmm. uh it, it, it just um you run out of um i don't know you just try to prioritize yeah. And so um, Danny just uh, said, oh, let's put it out. And I said, well, yeah. and, and this is during this, um, this pandemic right now. I said, well, you'll have to do it. I can't, I'm not going to go in the studio. It's already done. So Kurt mastered mm -hmm. it. And then uh, oh, okay. Danny's wife did the cover. And um, like your songs, you already had recorded or you recorded the vocals in your house? Oh, that or? was done. That was done 15, a good 15 years ago is when I, sang that well, stuff the song katie's shoes sounds familiar i don't know if maybe i've heard oh, that before uh i did give it to uh carl yeah there, there's a, a radio station in in uh in syracuse uh and uh i i had them i let they, they asked me if like they could have a song for their uh, cd compilation for to raise money and and uh, i gave them that song mm -hmm. back then and that might have been like 15 years ago I don't know. Well. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually surprised at how many unfinished and finished songs I have. Like, there's got to be at least a hundred, yeah, and yeah. they're just sitting there in 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 my my record room mm -hmm. on cassette so, tapes and CDs. Yeah. And it's just time. Sometimes you, you got to dedicate yeah. a lot of time to honing the song and you know put, getting it the way you want it. 
And like yeah, you said, and, with, and here, with time, yeah. time is... Well, here's the thing. I, I, I thought about this, and, and I started working at the bank 20 years ago. It was in 2001. Because I remember it was right after 9-11, and I, I started working in October, a month after, because my neighbor... Uh, who was a senior VP at the bank at the time, he retired now, was in the World Trade Center when it went down. And yep. that's how I got the job. He was walking his dog in October, and I just jokingly said, um, you know, uh, my wife, Betty, who passed away mm -hmm. five years ago now, she said, you know, you should think about getting a job because there weren't many shows on the books back then, uh, smithereen shows. And mm -hmm. So Andy was walking his dog. He, he survived the, the Twin Towers. He was... He was one of the people that was covered with all the soot and everything wow, wow. In, in his suit. But he's, he lives right across the street from me, and, and um, so he survived it. And he, he, so I said, you know, um, he, he said, uh, I, I said, you know, Betty wants, uh, you know, she says I should get a job. And so he, he got back right away, and he said, you know what? I'll, I'll give you a call on Monday. I think we have an opening. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I don't have any clothes. I, mm -hmm. I have T-shirts and jeans. I don't have any yeah, shoes. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> by Tuesday, I was there with this fake resume. Oh, I shouldn't even say this. It's probably going to be on the air, but I've been there long enough now. Mm -hmm. He said, don't yeah. worry about it. You'll learn what you need to do. You'll be fine. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so, you're going to go out and buy clothes, right? Dress shoes. Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, stuff. all that. Yeah. <laughs> shave. I had to shave, you know. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> do you meet with people like when you're work when you're working in the the building? Like oh, do you yeah. sit at a Okay. I sit in a cubicle okay. and most yeah. people I they very few they Look, I remember when when we got this offer to play with Tom Petty and my boss I I told her I said, "Look, I um uh, you know, I have this opportunity to go play um hockey arenas and you know yeah <laughs> and uh she never heard of tom petty what uh, so the, the people wow. that i work with are all you know chinese japanese uh, mm -hmm. trinidad um they're from all over the world india yeah. they have no they don't listen to me right. <laughs> you know, yeah they, oh, okay. even if wow. even if i told them that i play guitar in a band they wouldn't mm -hmm. <laughs> they heard they wouldn't the even Beatles? care, possibly. So what I like about it is I'm, I'm pretty anonymous there. It's just, you know, I just mm -hmm. blend in with everybody. And um, yeah. just, I'm just that guy that does yeah. what he does. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, so I, found that, that in the, I found that in the sports world. So, you know, I've got three kids and they're young adults now. But just, uh, you know, uh, um, I was in a rock band and an ancient folk band. And, you know, it, I'm trying to have conversation with uh, some of these other sports dads, you know. And it's the same thing. They're so into football and basketball. They're actually, all they know about music is, is uh, classic rock. They listen to the radio and they don't know right. anything like, yeah, anything else. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> the not banking world. Tom, that's, that's, but not to know Tom Petty. That's like not yeah. knowing the Beatles. You know, but my, par <laughs> my parents didn't, my dad never listened to music. My mom liked country music. And I bet you she couldn't name one of the Beatles back in those, <laughs> even back in the seventies or eighties. Yeah, it's, it's good for me because I don't want to talk about myself or the band. Oh I mean, yeah, you know I I'm, I just want to do my work and go home. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah and when you play, about, when you, uh, yeah, go ahead. When you play the shows and then afterwards you meet you know the fans. That's when when you're in in it. You know, but not mm -hmm. yeah. You don't want to. Not your whole life. Twenty four seven. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And there are times when we play in California or the West Coast and I'll, I'll get on a, um, I'll bring my work clothes with me and, and uh, I'll uh, take the red eye, get to Newark at 6 a.m. and then go to the work parking lot, sleep in my car for an hour and then come up with my clothes. I mean, there are a few people that come in, have come into work early and, and, and like, where, where you been? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I was just in L.A. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> and up on stage playing guitar. I find myself sometimes on the weekends, I'm driving around in Nebraska on the way to a gig, and I'll rent a car at the airport, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, like, wow, I'm driving around in Nebraska, and now I'm going to be back at work Monday morning. <laughs> it's yeah. really a weird, weird lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, that, that's adventure, though, that a lot of us don't have. That's, a, that's some, some great travel across the U.S., Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, been to awesome. uh, 48 of the states. I'm missing uh, Alaska and then 
one of those big ones. I can't remember which one, but I, Mon I, I Wyoming. I don't know because I've seen I've seen the uh, Mount Rushmore. That's South Dakota, right? South Dakota. Uh -huh. We played Fargo, so it's either Wyoming or Montana. But uh -huh. we have we pl I know I played one of those because there was some kind of big festival we played. Mm -hmm. So the, the the last one is going to be a mystery state. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called Blood and Roses. People who may not know the Smithereens, of course, Jimmy, who we're talking to, he's the guitarist. We got Dennis Dyken, drums, Mike Maceres, um, bass, and the late Pat Denizio, um, lead singer, rhythm guitarist, songwriter. Most people might not know that you were not born in New Jersey. You were not born in the United States. Is that true? Oh, God. You were born in Austria. Is that yeah. true? Okay. Salzburg, to be exact, yes. So when, when did you... Um, Me and Mark come to like the... this. <laughs> <laughs> what? When did you first come to the uh, U.S.? Oh, I was like a year old. Age. Oh, okay. Exactly a year yeah. old. My, my parents uh, are both from Hungary. And uh, long story short, after World War II, the Soviet Union stayed in all the Eastern European countries and kind of took it over and turned them into communist countries. So before that, they were free. My grandfather had a vineyard and he owned a tavern. Mm -hmm. So um, by 1956, there was a tiny revolution where uh, they rebelled against the Russians. And uh, of course they lost because they were throwing rocks at tanks. Yeah. And Eisenhower did say he was going to help, but, uh, you know, there was no interest for the United States to get involved with, with that. So mm -hmm. there was a period of time, like three days, where people were able to escape from Hungary to Austria. The, the borders were kind of, the, the guards were shooting up into the air. Mm -hmm. So all well, these people fled. So my parents and my uncle, who was 16 at the time, my dad was... 18, I think, and my mom 17. They uh, escaped into Hungary, and they were in various different uh, camps, immigration camps. And by the time they made it to Salzburg, uh, they were in, we were there for two years. Uh, I was born exactly nine months after they escaped. Oh, wow. And they got married. And then, uh, and then it, took them, uh, it took them two years to come to the United States. Uh, my grandmother's sister... My, my dad's aunt lived in the United States. She was born here. Because back in, in the 20s and stuff, people used to come here from Europe, and then mm -hmm. some of them would go back, some of them would stay. But uh, it, it still took my parents two years to uh, come here. And then, you know, and then here I am. I just mm -hmm. uh, happen to be born there. So that means I can't mm -hmm. be president. So they came in. <laughs> that is too bad, isn't it? <laughs> so they came and in. And I was actually... I'm okay. actually worried about being deported or something because many years ago, like in 1980, my, I had my original birth certificate and, and, and uh, my, uh, my um, naturalization papers. I was naturalized in 1964 when I was seven years old. All those papers were in a safe with my mom's jewelry and my entire coin collection at the time, and it was stolen from my dad's house. Uh. And I didn't think of it. I didn't think I'd ever need my naturalization papers or my mm -hmm. birth certificate or anything. So I, mm -hmm. I put it off. And then 9-11 comes around, and I'm like, oh, my God. I read in the paper that there was this um, Italian guy born in Italy. He fought in World War II with the United States, but he didn't have his papers, and they wanted to deport mm -hmm. him. And he was like yeah. in his 70s. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? I guess, I, guess yeah. I, gotta get, wow. I gotta I got to get this stuff. So... I, I, I uh, called up who I needed to call up, and it took me six months to get my um, naturalization papers. Um, mm -hmm. that, and it cost like $375, but yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. Wow. So now yeah. I'm, I'm bona fide. I'm, I'm legal. Well, it's good that you got yeah. this. 
Yeah. Well, I always was, you know, but <laughs> it's kind of scary yeah. when you think about it. It's like you need to have papers. Yeah. Well, and I don't know what the hell I would. I don't know what the hell I do yeah. in Austria. I don't speak German or anything. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jimmy, in uh, August, you guys did a quarantine concert. I watched the video. Uh, Robin's front yard. Oh, Robin Wilson, yes. Yeah, yeah, Warren. right there. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was right there in the front yard. I wish they had panned the audience I, uh, in, the, in the front yard. I didn't get to see them there. But uh, uh, how did that come about? How did that, uh, how did that go for you? Well, that was Robin's idea. He, uh, he lives in Arizona, but he also has a, a place in Long Island, I think. Not too yeah, far. Yeah, it was Long there. Island. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, he just wanted to do it. He's been doing stuff from his basement. And then he thought it would be fun if we did it. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was yeah. pretty simple. There weren't many people there. I mean, and people were really socially distanced. And, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was fun. It was a fu it, and it was a fundraiser as well for uh, uh, Crohn's Col uh, Colitis Foundation. Oh, right. That was yeah, that's probably yeah. why Robin did it. Yeah. Yeah, trying to raise some money that way and, and entertain the people as well. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and yeah, and to play because I I yeah. haven't done much of that lately except for myself. Yeah, yeah. I think he Dennis. I think he did one earlier in the year. So he's done okay. a couple of them in front of his. Yeah, house. he's he's done a few on his own also. Yeah, the one yeah. time they showed the the crowd, it was it wasn't a crowd though. It was probably neighbors <laughs> and yeah, people walking down the street and. Oh yeah, they didn't even yeah. know that uh, a guy from the Gin Blossoms lived yeah. there. <laughs> when he was doing a couple of Gin Blossom songs, I said to my wife, Magic, you know, you're walking down the street, and like, that yeah. sounds like, you know, the Gin Blossom. Yeah, yeah that, guy, that guy, that guy does it pretty well. Yeah. He does a Robin uh, pretty yeah. well. <laughs> Robin is lead singer, Smithereens on some of the shows, along with Marshall Crenshaw. Right. Uh, but Rob, Robin's been a fan a long time. Oh, uh, yeah. I think the first time he met you guys uh, was at, he worked at a record store. And, yes, uh, before he was uh, in, uh, in the gym. Tempe, Tempe, Arizona. Did I say that right? Tempe, uh, yeah. Tempe, yeah. Tempe. And Tempe. He has, a, he has a tattoo, right? Blood and Roses. Uh, oh, that's right. interesting. Yeah, he, uh, I, yeah, it was during the Green Thoughts tour in 1988. We passed by and we used to sign autographs at the record stores back then. And um, he was mm -hmm. working there. He was a clerk. Yeah. And him and his uh, future bandmates came to see, they would see us on every tour in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And then with Marshall Crenshaw, the same thing. He, we, you know, we met him, we, we played a bill with, we played with him in 1981. We opened up for okay. him in, in, in Jersey at the, uh, <laughs> it wasn't called the Fast Lane then, it was called um, something else for a year. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we got to know him and he played on our first album. He played on some of our demos. Okay. Uh, strangers when we meet but then when we actually recorded the song uh for our first album he came and did the keyboards and he brought along with him this uh eight string or eight string uh baritone guitar so he ended up using that on on white castle blues okay. so uh i don't know if you know that part but there's a part where it goes boom ba da ba da ba da ba da ba boom ba boom Anyway, that's that's Marshall Crenshaw, oh, but wow. he he was credited on the album as Jerome Jerome because um, <laughs> well he he was with uh, Warner Brothers or something, so nobody knew he was on the album. Yeah, yeah. You know. So so people got to look for Jerome Jerome. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's that's interesting. Yeah, so, so we go did... way back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Smithereens were on Capitol Records for their first four albums, which is just incredible, right? To be to be signed to Capitol. Well, it started out with Enigma, the, okay. this small label, okay. and then they had a distribution deal with Capital, and then after the first album did really well, then they kind of wanted to take us over. I mean, Capital, Sinatra, the Beatles, the Beach Boys. Um, Wayne did you were you getting were you getting Wayne radio? Yeah. <laughs> what? Were you getting radio airplay at the, like how how did the record contract come about? I mean, I, maybe it's complicated. All right. Well, here's the thing. I'm, I'm going back to those days. We didn't have a record deal. We decided we're going to start recording an album on our own. So we already had half the album recorded. Mm -hmm. So those became demo tapes that we sent. And then Enigma okay. heard tapes. They signed us. And then we 
recorded six additional songs or seven, maybe with like Castle Club of Blues. And then Don Dixon came in and mixed the original okay. six and recorded six new songs. So that was going to be our next independent record, but we got picked up by Enigma, mm -hmm. which was distributed by Capital. Um, and, you know, I think looking back, I think Blood and Roses could have been a bigger hit mm -hmm. if, if they had it together. They didn't release the single till like six months later and oh, okay we kept touring and touring we toured the country three times we toured for 18 months on that first album it kept snowballing wow. and getting bigger and bigger yeah and then the next album green thoughts you know went over to capital but i remember they weren't really interested and only a memory you know, it was barely, it, it only reached 99 on the charts. It was number one on the rock radio charts, but they didn't really promote yeah. it. House We Used to Live In was going to be the second single. They printed it up, and then MTV didn't want to put the video on heavy rotation, and then they, mm -hmm. they destroyed all the singles. So I have the covers for them, you know, that Dennis mm -hmm. saves because they were going to throw them out, some of the covers, and we've been selling them on the website, the actual picture sleeve without the record. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, and I do have a couple of the records. I did manage to get some. But So anyway... That was it. And then even when we put out the 11 album, they, they didn't think Girl Like You was going to be a hit either. And um, so it was always a struggle yeah. for us. So going back cool. to the first album, yeah, Behind the Wall of Sleep, Blood and Roses, they could have been much bigger had mm -hmm. we had good publicity and, and people behind us, like the machine. I call it the machine. Yeah, and back yeah, then uh, MTV could make or break a band too. And yeah. they did, you know. We were, we were all watching, you know. We were, I mean, we if you saw the same videos. video, like, every hour, every other hour, you, it was in your brain, it was in your mind, yeah. you know, and you might go out and buy, buy the album. You yeah. Know? I mean, that really helped. So for, with us, it was more word of mouth kind of thing, and, and uh, the college radio stations and, and some, of the, some of the major radio stations were behind it, you know. Uh, so thank God for that because the record company really didn't, uh, wasn't really big into yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I think it was great. You guys were on Saturday night live. Yeah. That was, well, how yeah. was, how was that experience? I mean, do you well, remember? Uh, oh yeah. I remember do you, do you remember it? Yeah. But, it, but then again, it was just another day because we mm -hmm. were on tour. I think we were in okay. Massachusetts and then we had to do a rehearsal on Thursday and then Saturday and then we were off somewhere else um, mm -hmm, on yes. Monday but it was it was a whirlwind and the reason we got on was because at that point our manager was uh, Freddie Demand who um, also managed Madonna so okay. he had a lot of he had a lot of clout and then there were mm -hmm. some people at a capital that were pushing for us but there was about 30 bands that were slotted for that and we got it I don't know how, but people really, mm -hmm. the machine was trying to work for us yeah. with that. <laughs> and, uh, and we did get on, um, which was yeah. amazing. So, but I didn't really think much of it uh, at the time, you know, um, like I said, it was just another day. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, looking back, it was, it was a great experience mm -hmm. for sure. And you just went there recently. Was it um, last year? Two, uh, oh, no, last, 2019. But you were on the stage, like <laughs> yeah, not 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 when it was live. But you you have to know somebody. Yeah, it was it okay. Was after, it was after. You're I was just alive. wondering if they gave you a tour again, or if you got to uh, sort of. Back. Yeah, okay. I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, it's you can't just walk up there. And <laughs> yeah, that's on my bucket list. Uh, Saturday Night Live. I've been watching since since it was on. I was like eleven. My parents would I was go to bed. Say, how old were you? I... <laughs> well, my parents, my parents would go to bed. They didn't know what I was watching, and I'd yeah. put on Saturday Night Live. You know, like a yeah. being eleven years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know if I missed any episodes. Each episode is you know hit and miss, but yeah. it's always been like that. It's a shame they don't show the uh, musical guests anymore. 
or yeah. they cut it out when they repeat it. And I, I think I know why. My guess is that they don't want to pay the musicians union because mm -hmm. I remember when I was on, I got a check for like $380 or something uh, from the union. And then they repeated it again. And I got another check for three hundred and eighty dollars, and I'm like, oh. "Wow, this is cool! I hope they keep showing it, you know." Yeah. yeah. But then uh, it stopped. So well, they, uh, I think that's the reason they probably don't want to pay. They started to put out the DVDs, but of course, they're you know, what are they in their forty fifth season? Yeah, about forty five. Yeah. They and put out the, like the first four seasons with the musical guest. Oh, really? Yeah. They might have yeah. They might have had different contracts back then. See, I don't know all that stuff. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would take uh, a lot Jimmy's... to put out all all the seasons, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, uh, talking about being on SNL, Jim and I um, went to see you at the State Theater in Falls Church, uh, repeated years, year after year, and uh, just love that venue. You know, we've been to lots of concerts, and I just love that venue. You can get up, you can sit at tables, you can be up on those uh, the, the the balcony in the back, those twin balconies, uh, looking down really close to the stage. So. Um, yeah, so what are some of your favorite uh, venues? Uh, do you like, the, what do you think of Falls Church, uh, Virginia? It's one of my favorite uh, venues. I, I love the setup. Yeah. B.B. Um, King's used to be a little like that, where you could stand in the front of the band if you want, and you could sit in the back, because, you know, mm -hmm. some people want to sit, some people want to yeah. stand. But I play much, I, maybe I'm not professional enough, but, I play better when there's people standing right up against the stage. Mm -hmm. And then usually they used to put barriers up in, in front of the stage. I'm like, take those barriers down. I want to, I want yeah. the people right up against the yeah. stage. Yeah. I, I definitely right. play better. Um, yeah. It probably makes it probably makes a difference when, cause when people are just sitting in chairs uh, and we were at that uh, the other place in Annapolis, um, you know, you're Ram's just sitting. Head. Yeah. Ram's head. But you know, I didn't enjoy it as much because I'm forced to sit or, or go standing along the wall, which is awkward, all the way in the back, or you know, go out for a, a smoke or rest or something. But uh, just to just to be alive and to to, to mingle around, I think I'm going to get closer and farther. And uh, you know, it's um, it's really cool. Yeah, I, I just I, lo I love it. I lo we it have is. we have such great memories watching you guys and just partying with you guys there at the at mm. Paul's church. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we it's, were it. Yeah, I mean, it is strange when you're playing and then you, the table in front of you, somebody's eating a salad. Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not rock are and you, roll. Are and you, you hear plates and forks and Yeah, you are you rocking with me or what? Uh, you're not yeah. singing along because you got lettuce in your mouth. We, yeah. we went to Falls Church 10 years in a row, like yeah. every year. And um, Mike lived in Virginia course i you know lived in pennsylvania and yeah, yeah. new jersey but i would travel to falls church and we would meet meet there uh, and that was mike and i saw you well we didn't see you guys but the first time uh was 87 at the stone pony we couldn't get in mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a whole story <laughs> yeah and then 88 um was the green thoughts tour yeah that we saw that was at the the, the beacon yeah in manhattan so my mike had only seen you in eight seen the smithereens in 88 and then falls church i'm not sure when we started going there but we decided this is what we're gonna do every year you know if we don't yeah. see each other all year we're gonna go see the smithereens but the one year so we Jimmy, decided, what about the... the one year we decided to mix it up and go to Ram, ram's head so we've only been there once you know but like Mike was saying, it's more like a dinner, dinner theater. Yeah, atmosphere. I, it's yeah. it's not it's not as much of a party as just sit and listen. So, do you remember the Beacon Theater back in '88? Was it you? You say '88? Was it? Yeah, yeah, '88. Yeah. Do you remember that show? Uh, or <laughs> that? Yeah. 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 was it just That's another day? Show. Was it just another day, bro? Well, yeah, it was just another day. But I do yeah. remember that one because uh, I remember not liking my guitar sound that night. I had this white Rickenbacker. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, for various reasons, I remember it. But uh, yeah, well, what's your memory yeah. of it? We... <laughs> no, when you guys that was... rocked. You and guys Paul rocked. Kelly and the Messengers was the opening band. Australian band, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now the so, only thing um, I remember, the only thing I remember is um, Pat had this remote control car. Right. That would come, yeah. Someone would light a cigarette. <laughs> 
and put it on the antenna and the car would, and he'd take yeah. the cigarette. That's the, I don't remember much from the, <laughs> that concert, but. So this is, this is so long ago, you could light up on stage, huh? This is, that's, you know. That's yeah, funny. You <laughs> yeah, you know, Pat was doing that for a while with the remote control car. Our crew would light a okay. cigarette and have it come okay. out. They also did a miniature Stonehenge that they would uh -huh. uh, let down from the ceiling and it was really tiny. <laughs> uh, we did all kinds of stupid things like that. I don't think we saw that. I don't, I don't remember that one. Well, you, you know, you, you have to, you're, you're on tour for months and months and you get, it's yeah. just, you do things for yourself that you think are funny, but yeah. I didn't think you would remember the, the car, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the remote. I remember car. the things that stood out, you know, the, yeah, yeah. I got to tell you about that car. <laughs> we were at a hotel once and Pat was really hung over and he, he could get really ornery, you know, and, and, <laughs> and, and so we're checking out of the hotel and we're all waiting there and the tour manager's dealing with the hotel clerk. And if you ever saw a spinal tap, you know, the hotel clerk is just, <laughs> yeah. So this poor guy, Pat put the remote control car on the counter and mm -hmm. then he would press the button and make it fall in behind the counter uh -huh. to the guy. And then the guy picked it up. He was a little yeah. perturbed. Mm -hmm. and, and then, so Pat did it like three times and the guy said, look, if you keep doing that, I'm going to keep the car. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that pressed the button, did it again, flew over the counter, and he threw the remote at him. <laughs> and he yeah, said, you keep it's it. yours. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that was no the more end of the car. No more cigarettes coming on stage. No, no more car, no. <laughs> you guys um, did a show or maybe a, more than one show in, in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you only well, we, go there? How many times have you been there? We went there before we were assigned to a, a label. We had our Beauty and Sadness EP, and there was a promoter in Sweden that heard it that brought us over there for a, a month. And uh, we did uh, a couple of shows in Sweden, one in Finland and one in Norway. And uh, we, we stayed at the promoter's apartment, all in okay. bunk bunk beds we were like uh -huh. the monkeys or the beetles <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah it was that was in 1984 and uh that was fun and then when we went back it was 87 and we every tour of europe we'd go to scandinavia and and mm -hmm. okay we even went to iceland which was really fabulous uh you only flew you over iceland does it didn't look like there was much there but that was just from the range. That <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, was great, great. Dennis and I mm -hmm. walked around and uh, we played at the Opera House there. We we had the number one record there for, for that month. And um, uh, above Madonna and Michael Jackson, it was like really weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got off the plane, That's we awesome. were interviewed. You guys yeah. were big in Australia too. Oh, uh, not really that big. I no? mean, you know, okay. we played the, the smaller theaters and the bigger bars. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's funny, Nirvana was touring at the same time there. They were bubbling under. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I had gotten to meet them. But, um, but yeah, Iceland, uh, two nights at the Opera House, sold out. And then uh, the, I don't know if you ever heard of the Sugar Cubes. Um, yes. they, oh, yeah. It you was are. their first gig opening for us. It was their first show ever. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah, Bjork. We um, saw them with, once. They were with um, Public Image Limited. It was at PNC or what was the Garden State Art Center. But right. We got there too late. We got there late and they did their last song before they went off. And it was that cat, cat, cat. Song. So it's, cat, cat, cat. That, it was on their first up. <laughs> they were a little. It's an odd. outrageous song. Yeah, I like the sugar. So, oh, that's what I remember. I remember about the sugar cubes. They they opened for us in Iceland, and then the guitar player fell into the orchestra pit and broke his arm. <laughs> oh wow! Oh. I remember that. Wow. <laughs> and so anyway, enough about Iceland. Yeah. No, no, that's yeah. that's that's news. The sugar cubes opened for you, and that was their their first gig. What were you saying? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They, they, they well. just formed. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Was in 1987. 1987. Yeah. Well, that's where they're and, from. And Bjork yeah. was pretty young. Then she must have been. Oh yeah, she must have been. Yeah, nineteen, twenty, in, or even younger. I don't know. 
I didn't <laughs> ask her age. I just <laughs> blew my show. It's just another day. Okay. <laughs> another day with whale steak on the menu. <laughs> I tried whale steak while I was there. Really? Yeah, yeah. I figured how often am I going to see that on a menu? So yeah. well, we, went to, we went to Stockholm a couple of years ago, and uh, they used to serve whale, but they don't serve it anymore. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, there, there was a, yeah, a meatball place that had all reindeer meatballs, uh, buffalo. You know, <laughs> and they used to have it. They said whale, but they, I guess, they can't serve it anymore. Yeah, well, uh, there's yeah. places that have exemptions. There's cultures that have exemptions, and they can keep whale hunting. You know, up in Alaska and, and Iceland. You know, they get those exemptions so they can keep uh, hunting. You know, because of their culture. Well, that's yeah. all they do. I mean, Iceland doesn't fishing is there. That's it. Who who's the most interesting person you've met? Like famous person, or maybe someone that you looked up to, or in music, and you finally got to meet. Uh, I had a chance to meet Pete Townsend one time. They were we were rehearsing in New York at a place called SIR. It's a you know big rehearsal hall, and um, many rooms there. And and Pete Townsend was in the next room with the Tommy play. For, you know they were rehearsing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and our crew came, a guy from our crew came in and said, you want to meet, you want to meet Pete Townsend? He's in the next room. And I, mm-hmm. I said, no, nah, it's just, uh, it just didn't feel right. And I, I, I heard or Sometimes he, you don't know what to say. It's not that. It's not that. I, uh, I, I don't get starstruck. I don't, uh, mm-hmm. I, I ran into Bruce Springsteen once uh, a couple of years ago at the airport. I was in the, um, okay. at the time, at the time it was continental. I, I was in the lounge. I go into the lounge. And uh, the bartender knew me there and everything. I, I like sitting in the lounge because it's quiet and there's, you know, mm-hmm. uh, nice chairs and everything. So Springsteen comes in and, and uh, I start talking to him because we did this 9-11 thing together in 2001, uh, this charity thing. So I'd met him before. So he says to me, uh, why don't you sit down? How much time you got? And I say, I got an hour and a half. He said, yeah, me too. I got an hour and a half. He's going to Belgium. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Patty, his wife, to see his daughter, uh, see their daughter in an equestrian competition. Yeah. So, yes. and, and Bruce lives not far from here, he, from me, mm-hmm. uh, like 20 minutes. So, but I, it's not like I hang out with him. I don't, you know, yeah. I'm not buddy, buddy with him. But, but I sat there for a ha- an hour and a half with him just talking, not really about wow. music, but more about family and food mm-hmm. and diet, you know, and yeah. exercise and just normal stuff. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. I um, he seems like a pretty down to earth guy. He tries to be. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's hard for, for him oh, yeah. to, to do that, but he, <laughs> but he tries. And I, he had handlers because I, I noticed that people were keeping other people away. Yeah, like, yeah. for autographs and for pictures. Like and me, stuff. that would <laughs> people like you. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so we, we, you know, it was great. We just sat there. People like me, they go, Bruce, Bruce, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that that makes sense, Jimmy. That definitely makes sense. We uh, we love his uh, Western Stars album from a year ago. You know, you familiar with that? Uh, no, I I don't have that okay. one. Yeah, we it's got to see the orchestra. film too. Yeah, the film made a film full orchestra. So you've got him with you know drums, guitar, bass, but then it's also a full orchestra, just bringing the richness uh, of strings back behind him and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I've been yeah. meaning to check it out. So. Is there any um, any news you can tell us on a new Smithereens album? <laughs> well, you yeah, give us some a, scoop. A scoop, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we have something that's going to be called the Lost Album, and okay, so when we lost our record deal with Capitol in 1993, mm-hmm. and we decided, okay, again, like with the first album, we're just going to start recording. Mm-hmm. So we went to a studio in New York and we recorded about 24, 25, 26 songs. And then we got a deal with RCA. So we took like 12 of those songs and re-recorded them for, it was called A Date with the Smithereens. Mm-hmm. But we have all that stuff. We have, it could be like Date Naked, like a, a Let It Be uh-huh. Naked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some, yeah. Someday we're going to release that, an alternate universe Date with the Smithereens because we recorded all those songs. And then there's the other half that nobody's ever heard. So we're going to release that hopefully in the spring, in May. 
I didn't want to release it until we can tour again, but we're going to have to because it's delaying everything. So we're going to put that out. And it's going to be exciting because, you know, we were younger. Pat's voice was still more youthful than it, than it, than it was later on. And, um, and the songs were interesting. And, um, and then in the meantime, where I'm writing songs with Marshall Crenshaw and with uh, Robin Wilson, and I even mm-hmm. have one with Susan Cowsill that I'm, I'm okay. hoping works out. And of course, Dennis and Mike, you know, Dennis, uh, Mike already came up with bass parts for all the new songs that I've been working on. And uh, I've written about 16 new songs since uh, this oh, pandemic. Wow. So I'm just going to keep writing and keep Mm -hmm. going, and then we'll just pick the best ones. And hopefully by 2022, because, you know, we'll need time to record it and get together. And I'm waiting for a vaccine before I go into a studio or anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to risk, you know, with the saliva and whatnot. So realistically, all right, the Lost album uh, this coming in this year, 2021, Mm -hmm. a new album, 2022, and then... There's other stuff. There's other stuff mm-hmm. in the vaults. And then we're going to move on. Okay. I find you it know? interesting, yeah. Robin Wilson and Marshall Crenshaw. I know maybe they'll sing different songs, but if they sang together, I don't... Yeah, know. well, they'll be new. <laughs> they'll be brand new songs. And it's not yeah. going it's, it's to sound like the Jim Blossoms. It's going to sound yeah. like us yeah. without yeah. Pat, but with mm-hmm. you know, a different singer. I think Robin's oh. a, good, a good fit for the, for the Smithereens. Yeah, I agree. Because he's more yeah. a rocker. And I've seen a couple of shows with Robin, with you guys. And mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to I meet Robin. He was, really, he was really accommodating and friendly. Uh, that was at Falls Church, I believe. Um, yeah, so it was, just, it was great to meet him and, and talk with him for a little bit. Yeah, very cool. You got one know, more thing. Unless, unless I Jimmy one. wants to... I do? No, I'm talking to the other Jim. You're Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might have covered everything. Oh, I'm we, start taking oh no, wait tree. a minute. I do have one last thing here. I'm going to start taking our, uh, my tree down, you know? It's, it's the new year. Take, and it, I go, take my Christmas we'll tree. Leave it up oh, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you meant taking down a live tree. That fell in a tree. But no, no, the Christmas tree. I got to do that, too. Yeah, yeah I'm going to get my Actually, chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take down a tree. I'm like, <laughs> which one? Yeah. <laughs> you can I leave it up until next that. Christmas. It, yeah. I actually had to do that because I have three acres and, and a couple, during the, one of the storms we had lost a lot of trees. So I, I was out there yeah. with the chainsaw cutting it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to be careful with your fingers. It's your, you know, for guitarists, that's to be extra careful. Yeah. I've never used <laughs> yeah. a chainsaw. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. I'll bring one over. I'll bring one over next time. I've used hedge clippers. But... So you, you said you had one more question? <laughs> oh, we have our mystery question. Okay. Oh, okay. Now you have to pick a number between one and seven, and then yeah. you'll get that question. So what's your number? Well, it was going to be eight, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, five. Okay, this is, a, this is a... Well, they're all kind of odd. Okay, you're in a well, plane crash. Well, you know, I don't expect anything else. <laughs> okay. You're in a plane crash and swim oh, to a great. deserted... And you swim to a deserted island... Now, only your portable turntable and three of your favorite albums have survived. <laughs> three. What are, those, what are those three albums you'll be playing for a long time, possibly? And, and, and how am I going to crank that thing up to work if there's no electricity on well, the a bat- It's a Victorola. There might be a battery on it, and, you know. Might oh, and, and the professor from while. Gilligan's Island is there, you know. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. He can hook it up. Your generator what, also... What, I, I, it would be better if I just had acoustic guitar with me because then I could just okay. keep playing forever. But okay, so uh, while I'm we could do what? Notes. What are the three songs that you would play on your guitar? Go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they, they would be unknown. They would be brand new. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. let's see. Let's go. Three albums. Um, all right. That's tough because. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching High Fidelity the other night on cable because it's, it's on for some reason again. And I don't know if you know, I used to own a record store back yeah. in the early 80s. And when that music movie in came a, out... Music in a different kitchen. Well, it was called Flaming Groovies, then Captain Video, oh. of course, because okay. I added videos. Oh, yeah. So 
it was uncanny how similar it was to my store, but um, I guess all independent record stores mm-hmm. were like that back then. They were all sno- we'd have snooty conversations about this and that. And uh, so in the movie, he, he had top fives of everything, top five this, top five that. Mm-hmm. So it reminds me of that. And then I was talking to my girlfriend, Cindy, about it, and I said, I, if, if I did a top, five, a top ten, I'd have to have different categories, like top ten jazz, top ten Christmas, yeah. top, ten, yep. top ten British, top ten American, top ten punk. So anyway, mm-hmm. to pick three out of all the categories <laughs> yeah. of music is yeah. really impossible. So my answer to that would be today – so it's not going to be the same. Like people okay. have asked me my yeah. top 10 and they've been mm-hmm. on the internet all over. And it's like, yeah. that was just that day. Okay. So what would it be? So, today? It's, your, so it's your mood today then. Yeah. What's, what's the mood? Oh man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think Jeff Beck's truth album. Okay. Which is an odd choice uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, it, it would be easy to say Pet Sounds, but okay, Pet Sounds. That's mm-hmm. always been, always been. You know what? I know what, because McCartney 3 is out right now, which I haven't heard yet. Yeah. The first McCartney record, I love mm-hmm. that album. I was... I just I was, listened to that a couple of weeks I was ago. in eighth grade, and mm-hmm. I grew up with that album. I love it. I, I love that whole album. So I love the organic feel of it and um, mm-hmm. that he played all the instruments and... Well, these yeah, are so ones you wouldn't, you wouldn't get tired of, too. Like, I wouldn't get tired of it. No, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't okay. get... There's very little I get tired... You know, I do get tired of stuff, but... You know what's funny? I, I put on the Green Thought... I don't listen to our records much, but I put on our Green Thoughts record the other day because, mm-hmm. to, to me, it's always been a Christmas record because we recorded it in December okay. of 87. And I remember rushing to get home for Christmas that year. So to me, it's always a Christmas record. So I put it on, and this is going to sound weird, but I'm listening to it as if I'm not in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, this, this, this sounds really good. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it struck me as like, wow, I, I really like this album. Yeah. And, uh, to put myself back to like 30 years ago or whatever, is kinda, mm-hmm. it's kind of strange. It's like another uh, person, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's how I think about a lot of things in my life. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, wow, that was me. I, you know, mm-hmm. and then like I'll see things on YouTube. Like we did this thing with Belinda Carlisle, uh, uh, a live broadcast of us doing Blue Period, and I'm watching mm-hmm. it, going, I don't remember even being there or doing mm-hmm. it, and yet there I am <laughs> on on the video. It's it's clearly me playing, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> uh, but I have uh, no recollection of it, you know. That's at wild. All. That's wild. All right. Hey, uh, J- okay. Jimmy, it's been great talking you, to you. Um, great stories. Thanks for your time. Oh, hopefully, thank you. My pleasure. And hopefully we see you uh, this year at some point. Falls Church? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Well, we'll see by summer. Things might, yeah. things might be better. All right. Thanks. Talk to you okay. soon. Have a good rest of the day, Jimmy. You too. Yeah. Intro and exit music by the band 99%. Today's show is produced and edited by Jim Thatcher. You can find Jim and Mike Talk on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and their host site, Podbean. 
The following songs were used today with permission from Jim Babjack. The Smithereens songs, Blood and Roses, and Only a Memory. The Bar, Katie's Shoes, and Crying in the Wind.